Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Melanie Mirzayan. I'm the owner of Wild Bakes and Cakes. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is going to be a really fun class. Um, I love working with cookies, um, especially when you um, kind of step away from the traditional look and feel and you bring in a little bit of um, spice into it. So this will be fun. Um, let's see. I will probably, let's just maybe go over all the stuff that we need. Um, if you are following along, I am going to um, get one batch ready, just so you guys could see the process. It's super quick for the most part, um, the consistency and that kind of stuff, okay? Um, if you are following along, unfortunately, it's going to be two steps for you. Um, it's definitely doable within the class time that we have, but just so you guys can prepare ahead of time, when we make the dough, we will kind of separate the dough in two separate sections and you're gonna to have to refrigerate um, one section for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, sorry, I have things popping up on my screen. And, um, but no worries, you know, while the, the one chunk is getting refrigerated, we can kind of move along and do the, the other part. Okay, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, so for, this class, um, if we don't mind, Felicia, go back to the tabletop. Thank you so much. Um, so these are the super cute cookies <laughs> that we are gonna make today. And let me move this over. We will need our, our tips. And these are the B series. So the small one is B4. The big one is uh, B6. Essentially, you know, they give you the same shape when you pipe them, uh, pipe your buttercream or your um, cookie in this case. Uh, it's just one is bigger than the other, okay? And once you guys start practicing with them and using them, you will know uh, what works best for what it is that you're trying to do, all right? And for today's class, I figured we'll do some fall colors since we're moving into fall and the holidays are coming, but essentially, you know, it's totally up to you what colors you guys want to use. Um, you can do more than two colors, but this class will, if anything, give you kind of the basic knowledge of um, how to do everything. And then you can kind of run with it and do whatever it is um, that you want to do and get super creative. Okay. And again, if you have any questions um, during class, please put it in the chat and Felicia will definitely, you know, let me know what it is so I can help you guys kind of get through class. Um, after class, if anything pops up and you guys need additional questions or um, anything, you can send me a message through my Instagram, which is Wild Bakes. Um, you can reach me there and I'll be more than happy to help you guys there, okay? So for today, we're going to use our two colors, the orange and the yellow. And if you have different colors, that's totally fine too. Some sort of fun sprinkles for your cookies, okay? And obviously all the ingredients that we're gonna need for our dough, for the butter cookie dough, you'll need a piping bag. And the piping bag usually, and I know I talk about this all the time in my classes, so if you have been following along, you're probably kind of rolling your eyes. God, I've already heard this, but this is for all the newbies. <laughs> that are coming in. So for the bags, they usually have two different sizes. There is um, 12 inch and a 16 inch. Um, I just wanna make sure you guys grab the right one. The 12 inch bags are going to be a little bit smaller and they are good for smaller projects like this, okay? Especially if you're using it to um, pipe small buttercreams or you're gonna use it for chocolate and things like that. The bigger one, the 16 is a lot bigger. Um, and those are good for when you're um, frosting your cupcakes and you're trying to coat your big cakes. Um, you just have a lot more room in it, okay? And let's see, what else are we gonna need? We are going to make them um, fun little gifts at the end of the class. So we need some clear um, kind of like gift bags. They have different sizes. Uh, but they essentially look like this. Um, I know Michael's also carries super fun patterns, especially the fall ones that are coming out and the Halloween ones that are coming out. So it's totally up to you what bag you want to use. I'm going for a clear one just because our cookies are going to be super cute and we want to show them off. 
okay? And we'll just use like a super fun bow just to tie it all up, okay? All right, so with that said, kind of let me clean up my little area and I will start the baking process. So I do apologize if things get a little bit loud on my end. Um, I'm gonna move this over so you guys could see it better, okay? Um, so for the recipe, it calls for one cup of unsalted butter. I do suggest going with unsalted because it'll give you a better control of how much salt you end up using in your cookie dough. If you get the salted one, you kind of don't know how much salt's already in there. And then you add, you know, salt from the recipe and it just might get super salty. So that, that's just a preference and a side note. Okay. So we need room temperature butter. I already went ahead and creamed a little bit my butter and my sugar just because of time for class. Okay, because you have to kind of let it beat for about five minutes to get it nice and fluffy. So if you're moving along with the class, go ahead and get started. Like put your butter, um, your sugar, and I think your salt at the same time and kind of let that go uh, to get it nice and fluffy. And for me, the next steps will be to add in the eggs and the vanilla. Okay, so I'm going to do... I usually use pure vanilla. I get these big ones from Costco. Um, the price is super great and they're actually actual, um, it's vanilla, so it's not like flavored or anything, okay? So I need one teaspoon of vanilla. You can also put almond um, extract in there as well if you like to. I'm just gonna stick with vanilla for mine, okay? But it doesn't matter. You can even do half and half put some vanilla, put some um, almond extract, it's all good. And we're gonna put in our egg. Okay, just wanna make sure I don't get all the, the skin in there. All right, so now we're gonna give this a little bit of a spin. Get it nice and mixed. And after that, we're gonna put in our um, flour, okay? And that's all it really is. It's a very simple recipe uh, with very few ingredients, uh, but it tastes really good and you can do so many fun things with it, okay? All right, so I'm gonna add in my flour. Where did I put it right here? So just, you wanna go a little bit at a time. I've done it where I put everything in there and I turn it on and flour literally like goes everywhere. And every time I'm like, it's not gonna happen this time, but somehow it does. So we'll take our time today. <laughs> Get it mixed in there. And then you can slowly add it in, but make sure your speed is on low, okay? Until you incorporate all of it in there, slowly. So it's going, I'm gonna heat it up a little bit. Make sure it's getting incorporated nicely. All right. Okay, so once you see everything's kind of all together and good, the dough consistency is going to be um, thicker and very, very sticky, okay? So this is where we're gonna have to separate it in two different chunks because the first chunk, we want it to be kind of mushy and sticky because we're gonna pipe the top part of our ice cream cone, so the ice cream part of it. And we're gonna refrigerate the second half because we need to roll it out and cut it in kind of a cone shape, okay? And we can't really do it with this, all right? So I'm going to separate my dough in actually three little um, chunks only because I'm going, so one chunk is going to be refrigerated for the cone section, okay? One chunk is going to be for my yellow and the other chunk will be for my orange. 
And if you're using, you know, three, four colors, then you're going to have to separate your dough to the amount of colors you're going to turn them into. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get this kind of out. <clears throat> Any questions, guys, that I can answer right now? Please put it in the chat. I don't have any questions at this okay. moment. It looks like there are some that may be possibly making them right along with you. Oh, perfect. This is fun. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a chunk for my yellow, a chunk for my orange. Okay. So I'm just going to get that out. Get it nice. Yeah. See, it's like thick and very sticky. Okay. That's for my one of the colors. And that's for my other color. All right. And the rest, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in either a Ziploc bag or a plastic wrap. Um, I usually use a plastic wrap just because it's easier. And then I'm going to put it in the fridge for about 15, 20 minutes, you want it to be a little bit more on the solid side so you can um, roll it out, okay? So it doesn't like stick everywhere. This. All right, so all you have to do is just get your dough into the plastic wrap, just like that. Make sure you get everything. All right. And now we're just going to kind of loosely roll it like that. And we're going to put it in the fridge. OK? So I'm going to move all my stuff over a little bit. Oops. All right, and I always love working with parchment paper on my table just because it's so much easier to clean things up. I love it. All right, so now we are going to color what we have here, okay? I am using um, just regular um, food coloring um, from Michael's. And like I said, you know, they have so many different fun shapes or not shapes, colors that you could use. So just kind of, you know, go for with whatever theme your party might be or what kind of gifts you guys want to give. So just have fun with it. And these things are super concentrated. So you don't want to off the bat, like pour a whole bunch of color in there because then it sometimes it just becomes too much and everything will get kind of soggy and sticky and you can't use it anymore. So I always suggest start small, sm start with like one or two um, kind of drops, right? Mix it in and then see, see the shape, what it looks like, all right? And if it's still not dark enough or it's not the shape that you like, then go ahead and put some more in there. Um, I was now that I'm thinking from the for the recipe. So for the sugar, I normally use like coconut sugar um, or unrefined sugar. Um, for this one, I just put regular sugar, um, just so you guys could you guys could see the color. But if you end up using like a coconut sugar or unrefined sugar, they're a little bit darker in color, especially the coconut ones, like pretty brown. And your dough will come out um, kind of uh, darker shades, right? So it's not going to be, so your colors essentially won't be as bright is what I'm saying. <laughs> Trying to get my words out. All right. So I have this beautiful yellow. I think I'm okay with this shade. Make sure it's nicely incorporated. All right. So I'm not going to do the orange. I'm going to put like three drops in there. And it's always so fun to see the colors. 
and what they actually end up looking like, right? Once they're baked. <laughs> All right. So if you guys are following along and you have your dough already in the fridge, this is perfect time to kind of get this ready. All right. Mix it up. All right, and I'm using a uh, spoon, but you guys can use, you know, obviously whatever is works better for you guys. Spatulas, like the little mini spatulas are great. All right, so I have my orange ready and it's the shade that I actually want. All right. So if you have, so it doesn't matter how many colors you have, the this next process is going to be the same. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna get um, a good chunk of uh, plastic wrap. You don't want it to be too big, maybe, I don't know, like a paper size, eight by 10 kind of chunk. Okay. And, okay, so we have that. And what you need to do now is section off your colors side by side. All right. And again, if you have more colors, it doesn't matter. It's the same process. But we have two colors. So we are going to put them just like that. Okay. So you want it to be in rows. I'm using my fingers. Okay. And the next one will go next to our first color. All right. So side by side. Just like that. And if you have, you know, other colors, then you're just going to kind of Put that next to the orange, next to the other color, next to the other color, especially if you're doing like a rainbow look, which is super cute. Um, that's how you would essentially do that. Okay. So now we're going to roll it on one side. Okay. So we're going to take our paper, plastic paper, and we're going to roll. So we're going to make sure that the dough is going onto the other dough. So the plastic is not covering it, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna put that on and we're gonna roll it out. Okay. So we have both of our colors still next to each other in our bag. Okay. Now we need our piping bag. So get that ready. This is my um, 12 inch, okay? So this is where you get to choose what kind of tip you wanna work with. Um, again, it doesn't matter. You know, the bigger it is, the more um, dough will come out, the smaller, the less. For this one, let's go ahead and use the big one just because our dough is a little bit on the thicker side and we wanna make sure we get a nice, uh, fun pattern, okay? What you will do is Tip down all the way in the bag. All right, we're gonna get it all the way nice and tight to the end. All right, and we're gonna cut it a little bit above kind of the grids that we have over there, okay? You don't want it to be too close or on the grids because you don't want the plastic to interfere um, with your tip. You don't wanna go too high up because then your tip will boop, fall out. <laughs> and that is not fun, all right? So I'm just gonna maybe cut it right about there. And you can just peel that off. Okay, so now everything is ready to go. And now we're gonna take our, our dough, we're gonna cut this excess um, plastic wrap on one side. All right, so like right about there. 
the, the other side, it doesn't matter. And you want this side to go into the bag first, head first. So see, that goes in. And our bag. All right. And then, whoops. Now we're going to just try to squeeze everything out. All the way till it starts. You can kind of see it coming out. Okay. Okay, and then you twist, twist, and you can hold it like that. That's kind of um, the proper way, but you know, we all have our own little tricks and tips and things like that that works better for us. And then you can kind of use your fingers um, to squeeze the dough out, right? So now uh, what we need to do is the piping needs to happen on the baking sheet, um, the pan, whatever it is using, because you're going to refrigerate that as well. <laughs> okay. There is a lot of cooling happening here. And the reason for that is um, to minimize the cookie from spreading so much when it's baking, okay? So if we pipe this and put it straight into the oven, um, our cookies will spread a lot more than they should. So that's why we put them back in the fridge for a few minutes, for about 10 minutes, and then we bake them, okay? And I think this recipe is, um, you would preheat your oven for 350 Fahrenheit, and you bake the cookies for 12 to 15 minutes, um, depending on your oven. But essentially I'm looking for a light kind of golden um, brown on my cookie. I don't want it to burn and I, I don't want it to take away from the colors. Um, so, you know, like my oven, I have to do 15 or else um, it, it doesn't um, bake all the way, okay? So now that we have ready, we have our baking sheet ready. We are going to create, let me show you. We're gonna create the ice cream part. Okay, so this part is what we're gonna work with right now. This part is being chilled in the fridge as we speak. So this will be our next step, okay? And these little guys are just fun, fun little cookie things you can do to put it in, in the gift bag. Um, or gift box, whatever it is using, because you're going to end up having some leftover and it's fun just to have these little things um, added to your gift set. All right. So when you're piping, you also have to kind of keep in mind where you're going to put your, your cones, um, your ice cream. So you want to make sure you are at least an inch or two away from the other one because your cookies will spread a little bit and you don't want them to start connecting to, to each other in the oven, okay? All right, so we're gonna start, I'm gonna start in this corner here and make sure you guys can see that. And what you do is you squeeze a little bit out and you're gonna do, as you're squeezing, you're gonna start doing a zigzag kind of form, okay? My dough is actually a little bit on the thicker side. All right, leave that. I'm gonna move over and create my other, other one. Again, start with a little dab and then zigzag as your little rows get bigger than the first one, just to kind of make it look like the ice cream top. The one key, is these cookies are very fragile essentially. So if you make them like humongous, they tend to break when you're trying to like put them in the bags and move them around. Um, so just be mindful of the size of the cookie that you're making. Um, the ones that I made are, are a little bit on the bigger side, but anything bigger than this tends to um, kind of fall apart. Okay, so if you're um, thinking about size, um, I don't know, these are maybe, five inches long altogether. Um, but you guys could see kind of how that goes. All right, so I'm gonna do one more. Again, 
squeeze. And as you're squeezing, you're going, doing a row. And the row gets bigger every time you go down. And then just end it in one corner. All right. So this is where you get to decorate your ice cream. You can leave it like this for sure. If you think this is cool enough and you're like, you know what? I don't want to do anything else. You can um, put some sprinkles on there. And if that's the case, then this is kind of the time to do that while your dough is um, wet and ready to go. So go ahead and decorate these guys however you like. Okay. All right. And now we have some left over in our bag and we're gonna do those little tiny pops. And for that, all you have to do is hold the bag and your tip straight down, squeeze, don't move your bag, just squeeze until you get nice little chunk and lift quickly, okay? And you can make these as small or as big as you want. The smaller you make them, they're essentially gonna burn in the oven. They're gonna be very um, crunchy and crispy, okay? So you don't want them to be too small, but you definitely have the option of making them, you know, whatever size you like. So again, hold, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze until it's as big as you want it, and then lift. Okay. I'm going to do a few more and lift. You can put sprinkles on these guys as well. Uh, once they're baked, you can sprinkle chocolates on them. You can dip them in chocolate. So you can do all kinds of um, things once they are done. All right. And you can definitely use different kinds of tips to get different look and feel for your stuff. But for this class, we're just kind of utilizing um, this technique or this look, okay? So I'm gonna do one more. Whoops. I messed up my ice cream. All right. There we go. All right. So we have this ready. Now we need to get our other dough out of the fridge. Mine's already been chilling for a long time, so it's the right consistency, so I can show you guys um, how to do it. If you are doing the class right now, it's probably not ready for you to do that, but you can definitely you know, watch and see how we do it. So that way, once yours is ready, you can finalize your ice cream cookies and pop them in the oven. All right, so we're gonna put this aside for a second. Now we need to flower our working station a little bit lightly. All right, because the flower is gonna definitely help with the stickiness, okay? You don't wanna put too much flour, uh, but just enough where you feel comfortable working with the dough and it's not sticking to your hands, it's not sticking everywhere and you can actually roll it out. All right. So let me take, Take a little bit and we're going to roll it into flour just to make sure it's not too sticky. Okay, so the thickness, you don't want to go too thin. You want to kind of keep the thickness consistent to your ice cream heads, if that makes sense. Okay, so you want it to be kind of as thick as this um not super thin because then that's just not gonna work so it's actually you don't want to roll it out too thin right that's what i've been trying that's what i was trying to say <laughs> all right so you just kind of gently start rolling it out all right i'm going to gauge the thickness visually just to see it's like okay i think that's that's pretty good I can work with that. All right, make sure I can lift it. So now what we need to do is create our 
columns. Let me bring this back out. So now we are creating this part, okay? So you can, obviously you don't wanna make it too long and you don't wanna make it too short because then visually, you know, it doesn't look great. So just kind of gauge what works best with what you have um, done already. And we just, let me actually show you guys, it might be easier. So you can use a knife, you can use a pastry cutter, um, whichever one you have works fine. And essentially we want to cut a straight line for the top, right? And I'm guessing mine is probably, my ice cream is probably about this, this big in width. All right, so I'm just gonna create another straight line, another straight line on one end, another one on the other end, okay? And now we're working with the length. So picture your ice cream is right there. This is our cone. And maybe I don't, I think this might be a good, um, good height. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that as well. Move these guys over. All right. And you have to kind of work quickly um, in this process because the dough starts um, going to room temperature and it'll, you know, go back into kind of that super soft and sticky place. So just make sure you have a plan, you know what you're doing and just crank them all out when the time comes, all right? So now we're gonna give this kind of our um, cone shape, okay? So I'm just gonna cut the side on this side, give it like a triangle-ish look for our cone. Do the same thing here. And on that side, all right. And now we're gonna create our lines, our pattern for our cone, okay? Again, you can use your knife, you can use um, your pastry cutter. These are always fun and easy, so I'll show you guys. And essentially what you wanna do is um, create diagonal lines going this way and then going that way, okay? So we're gonna start, and you don't wanna, um, cut into your, your dough because you don't want to cut your um, dough apart. You want to go firm enough, but soft enough so you're just creating the pattern, all right, for the look uh, that we're trying to go. So just kind of very gentle, but firm. See? And then we're going to go the other way. Just like that where we can clearly see the pattern, but we're not cutting into too much into our dough. Okay, same thing here. And then create, and again, the it's, you just kind of go visually to what looks good. There is no, um, you know, set dimensions <laughs> for these things. So just definitely have fun with it. Make sure I'm not cutting the other end. All right. So now I have my cones ready and now we're gonna assemble. All right, I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna wrap it back up. Um, by the way, you guys can freeze these guys and then you know bring them back out another time and um, do whatever it is that you wanna do, okay? So these are perfectly good to be frozen for a while. Just make sure it's in in an airtight um, Ziploc bag in a container where moisture is not getting into it, okay? And you should be good to go. So now I'm gonna bring back our, our little um, ice cream tops and we're gonna gently move these onto the pan, okay? I'm gonna show you guys in here in a second. All right. So now we want to connect our ice cream to our cone, all right? So gently just kind of push it along and you can use your fingers just to like adjust and make sure they're connected. And you know, if you're working with it now, you could tell it's super soft. So you just want to work quickly and very gently, <laughs> all right? So make sure it's nicely attached 
to the top of your ice cream. All right. And they are ready to go. I guess I could do one more for this guy. So I'm gonna do one more just so you guys can see the process again. And once we are done um, with this, see now it's starting to get really mushy and very soft. So I'll see if I can maybe do one more without it making a huge mess over here. All right, so a little bit more flour. You wanna dust it. Okay. I'm gonna roll this out, make sure I have enough enough um it's thick enough and i have enough um space to cut this all right so i already kind of know what my ice cream um, cone is going to look like and i'm just going to cut away and create my shape all right so maybe this one will go straight we'll do straight lines and see what happens so instead of going zigzag we'll do straight Not too bad. I think I like the other pattern better though, don't you? Still looks okay. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing. Attach it to this gently. You guys see that? Okay. Make sure they are connected. All right, so now I have everything ready to go. It's all decorated the way I want it to. My pieces are connected um, nicely and I'm ready to put this in the fridge for about 10 minutes or so before I bake it. So while that's happening, you can go ahead and um, preheat your oven to 350. And after 10 minutes or so, you know, you just take the, the pan out, your baking sheet out and pop it right into the oven, okay? And when it's done and it's baked, you pull it out and just let it sit. Let it sit until it's completely cool. Don't try to touch it or anything because it'll get all messed up. Believe me, I have done that as well. All right, so while you guys are doing that, I'm gonna bring out my cookies that I've already baked so you guys can see what it essentially looks like when we are done. And they come out of the oven. Ta-da! We have our beautiful, fun little cookies. These guys are going to be easy to handle, okay, just because they're solid, they're ready to go. These guys are going to be very um, fragile, so you want to make sure you are moving them with care <laughs> and with love because you don't want them to start breaking, okay? And that's why if you make them a little bit smaller, they're easier to handle, okay? And you could, like I said, you could serve it like this if it's ready for a party. You can um, keep it in an airtight container, um, room temperature, so it has to sit on the counter, but make sure it's protected. Or you can freeze them same concept, um, airtight bags, Ziploc bags are great. Um, the plastic um, containers. So put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in a container and put it in the fridge because you want this to be protected or not fridge, sorry, freezer. Um, and it should be good for about six to eight months in the freezer. Um, as far as countertop uh, for you to eat about five to seven days. Okay, it should be good. So if you're gifting, so just kind of keep that in mind. And that's kind of the cool thing, you know, that it's not chocolate. It's not going to melt if the weather's hot um, or cold or anything like that. So it's that's why it makes it such a perfect gift for especially the holidays that are coming up. All right. So essentially, you can use um, any bag that you want, whether it's patterned, whether it's clear. Again, I'm going to use the clear one just because these are so pretty. I want them um, to be able to see and not, you know, have like these uh, funky patterns blocking what we just worked so hard to make, right? All right. 
So we're going to gently pick them up and put them so you want them to go in this way, okay? Because the bow is going to be on top, all right? So we're going to gently put this in the bag. All right. And these bags that I got from Michael's, they already came with um, these silver ties that are great. Let me show you guys these things here. Um, that kind of helps to do the first sealing of the bag, right? So we're gonna seal it up, give it enough room for our bow that's gonna go in there. All right, and then twist, twist until it's nicely twisted and then wrap it around so you don't see, see this coming out essentially. All right, so we have our bag ready to go. And all we have to do is decorate it with our fun little bow. All right, so again, this is all, you can customize it any, um, any way you want, any colors you want. Um, I've also done these in um, kind of like unicorn rainbow pattern color here and with like fun little sprinkles for you know, little girls' birthday parties and things like that. So you can definitely have a lot of fun with them. For the holidays coming up, um, I'll try to do some of these, um, like make them look like Christmas trees or ornaments and have fun uh, with the holidays as well. So if you like uh, making cookies, um, if you follow me on Instagram, I usually post all the fun things that I'm thinking about doing and all the classes that are gonna be coming up. Um, so you can essentially get, you know, all that information there as well. And I know Michael's usually posts it on their, um, on their wall in their classes, um, online classes section as well. Okay. So you guys could check out, check that out. All right. So all we have to do now make our little bow. I'm not a fancy bow maker, so don't judge me. <laughs> uh, this is all going to come out, but Essentially, you just kind of do what you want to do here. And you have to be gentle because you don't want to end up breaking your cookie, you know, while you're trying to decorate it. All right. So I'm going to make, I think my bow is a little too fat, but terrible. This is terrible. <laughs> All right. So I have a cute little bow and I have my, my cute little um, cookie, butter cookie. And these guys are ready to, for gifts. And um, yeah, they're ready to go. And oh, and I forgot, but you guys essentially can add these in the bag as well. Okay, it kind of makes it super cute. But hey, Ali, that's- Yeah, one quick question uh, really yes. quick. Um, one of our viewers is asking, so basically you're using the cookie dough um, for the coloring and for the cookies. Yes. Yep. So we are treating the cookie dough in two sections. So we're treating it like a cookie dough. And then we're also treating it like buttercream where we are giving it um, color um, so we can pipe it out and um, do fun patterns with it. Does that make sense? I hope that I answered that question. And just really quick, I know it was answered in the chat, but if you could just um, um, let them know again how long to have the cookie dough chilling in the refrigerator. Yes. So when you are making, well, it's two parts, right? If you are not going to do this look, if you're not going to roll out your dough for any shape that we just kind of did here, then you would kind of pipe out your cookie however you want it to be. And you're gonna chill that for about 10 minutes before you put it in the oven, okay? You always wanna chill it before it goes into the oven because you don't want these guys to spread as they're baking, then they kind of look really terrible actually, because I've done that again <laughs> myself. I've done all these bad things. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you. But if you are trying to use the dough to roll it out for any reason, so in this instance, we're, we rolled it out to make our, um, 
ice cream cone part of it, then you're going to have to chill that chunk for about 20 minutes, okay? Because you want it to get nice and solid for you to be able to work with it. Um, I'll show you right now, just within the time of this class that I rolled it out and, you know, I we went through the class, that same dough has turned into mush. So it is super sticky and super soft, and I'm not gonna be able to roll this out. I can pipe it. I can, you know, create the little ice cream part and these little guys, but it'll be too sticky for me to roll it out and create this part of it, if that makes sense, okay? So if you are trying to give it a shape, uh, you're trying to work with it, then you're gonna have to refrigerate this part of it for about 20 minutes, okay? But if you are just going to pipe it and you're not rolling anything, you're not cutting anything, um, then you're going to do what you're doing for, and then you put it in the fridge for about 10 minutes before you bake it. All right. I hope that answered your question. And then are you on Facebook as well? Um, yes. Wild Bakes and Cakes. But I'm primarily on Instagram. So I'm more active on Instagram than I am on Facebook. But you could definitely uh, message me there as well. if That's the platform that you're using. And I'll be more than happy to check that as well. And kind of, you know, guide you guys through and answer questions. So just so you know, there are a lot of thank yous and love, loved your class and that they will be <laughs> um, trying to make some this weekend. Fun. Yes, I would love to see what you guys come up with. But sometimes, you know, these online classes are a little bit tricky because I don't get to see what you guys are doing essentially and what you're making, but I want to see the end result, right? We work so hard to put all this together. So if you guys do end up making it, um, please post it on um, on Facebook this up on Facebook or Instagram, wherever, and make sure to tag me wild bakes. You can tag uh, Michael's as well, which is Michael's classes or make it with Michael's. Um, and I'll be able to see what you guys come up with. You can send them directly to me so I can see it. Um, I would love to, um, like I said, see what you guys come up with, what colors you use and what shapes and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Anything else before we wrap it up? Um, I'm going through the message as well to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah. Um, there's um, Antoinette who said that she never uh, piped cookie dough. And I'm pretty sure she's probably not the only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's never piped cookie dough. And then um, Sarah's wondering if there will be a cookie recipe that's gluten free. Um, yes, I actually do have a cookie recipe that's gluten free. Um, I don't have it to share right now. But if you want to send me a message on wild bakes, um, I'll definitely be able to share that with you. Okay, because I do, like I said, in my previous classes, if you are following along, my son does have a lot of like food allergies. So that's another section of my baking life that I also do the gluten freeze and the dairy freeze and you know, egg freeze and all that stuff. So if you guys have questions about that portion of baking, I'll be more than happy to help as well. Okay. And create, maybe create recipes, maybe moving forward. I could do when we do the class um, handouts, I can have two options, one gluten-free and one regular one and hope that helps. And I would say also, if you like, um, if you want to provide the recipe before we upload it to YouTube, we can put it there um, as we oh. always put the uh, attachments to the video as well. So just know that you can oh, always uh, check the description um, on our YouTube channel and it will have the attachment of the recipes as well. Um, there is another oh. question asking how long uh, do the baked cookies stay fresh? Uh, the baked cookies, um, room temperature, about five to seven days. And after seven days, it's not like it's going to go bad and it's going to poison you or anything. It's just not going to be fresh and tasty. So that's kind of the sweet spot. And um, Felicia, thank you for reminding me about the handout. So 
do I send you the recipe and then you'll be able to share it with everybody on the YouTube channel? You surely can. You just send it okay. to or just respond back to um our our email and mm -hmm. with that email and we'll get that uploaded to the video. Okay, great. So that way it'll be up for um anyone else who wants the recipe and you could you guys could just grab it there. Exactly. Cool. So that anyone that may um that didn't get to watch the live and that may want to go back and watch the recording, they'll be able to have it as well. That's great. That's awesome. I'll make sure to get that to you so everyone can grab that as well. All right. All right, guys. Well, if you guys have no more questions and comments or anything like that, this was really fun for me. I made a huge mess here in my kitchen, and I'm sure you guys probably did too. I hope you enjoyed this class. Um, so with September being over for me, for my classes, moving into October, which is my favorite month, I love Halloween. That's kind of my favorite holiday. <laughs> I definitely have a lot of fun classes prepared for you guys each week. Um, next week, I believe is on the 4th. It's a super fun and special class geared more towards um, the, the little guys. So it'll be fun little cupcakes, monster cupcakes that are easy to do. Obviously, they're going to need your help to kind of, you know, go through the class and stuff like that. But um, just to throw that out there, if you guys are interested uh, making cute little monster cupcakes, uh, don't forget to sign up for that class as well. Okay. I enjoyed this class. I hope you guys did too. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. See you guys in my next class. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Felicia, for your help. You've been